Welcome to Journey to Esquire, the podcast. I'm Jocelyn Hardrick, founder and president of Diversity Access Pipeline, Inc., the company behind this podcast and other great programs like Journey to Esquire Scholarship and Leadership Program, which provides $2,000 cash scholarships to third-year law students and internships to second-year law students, along with leadership training and mentors. And Journey to Esquire, the blog, which provides insightful articles to help navigate you through law school and beyond. Find out more on our website, www.journeytoesquire.com. I'm Sarah Lalu Amin. I'm a shareholder at Banker Lopez Gasler in Tampa and immediate past chair of the Florida Bar Appellate Practice Section. I really chose appellate law while I was still in law school, and and I knew that it wasn't necessarily a given. It's a niche practice area. It's not something um, that you know everybody who thinks about doing it gets to do. And I was very aware of that, um, but I just really found my home in the practice of law in this type of work. Um, it obviously is very writing heavy and. And I loved transitioning into that type of persuasive writing. Um, But with in in the legal context, it was such a good marriage of my mathematical logic background and my interest in psychology and storytelling. And um, I just really enjoyed that and really wanted to do that. And then the oral advocacy piece. Um, again, in law school, it was really my first experience with a lot of that type of advocacy, a lot of that type of performance. And I I learned to really enjoy it. And, and that's maybe a, a funny thing to say. I learned to enjoy it, but it didn't come naturally for me. But I found out that as more I did it, um, the more I had that experience, the less fearful I was of it and the more I could enjoy it. And it can be such a fun aspect of your practice, that performance. Um, You know, I think trial lawyers, you know, definitely get to experience that with a jury. And it's just such a fun thing that we get to do. And it's such a privilege to be an officer of the court in that way and to get up there and advocate for your clients in that manner. So um, I I could see all of that writing on the wall when I was still in law school. And then after I started working, um, I started out in litigation, but with an eye toward appellate work, but there just weren't a lot of spots available for that. And so I just kept asking and asking, and asking, until finally, um, when there were some changes in in the positions available and things like that, I did get that opportunity. And prior to that, I, you know, made sure that if an appeal came up in the litigation work that I was doing, um, that I, you know, got to be involved in that and and would just do anything to, um, to kind of get into that area of practice. And then I would say maybe about a year out is when, you know, I became a true dedicated appellate attorney and um, then became board certified in appellate practice and um, the rest is history. I have an interesting story on why I decided to become a lawyer. Not interesting in terms of a calling, um, interesting in how perhaps spontaneous it, a decision it was. Um, I was in undergrad. I had done a variety of things in undergrad. I ended up with two majors, mathematics and psychology, um, which, you know, the natural path one would not necessarily say is law school from there. But my husband was still in engineering school, and I didn't necessarily want to wait um, to, you know, for him to finish a year before I started law school. And so what I did is I applied to various programs, um, and I said, if I, you know, I'm lucky enough to get a scholarship from Stetson, that's what I was going to do. And that's what I did. And so a lawyer was made. So my law school application process was was pretty simple. 
um, I had to stay in Tampa. And so I applied to Stetson and that's, I had fallen in love with Stetson and that's, that was my first choice. If that worked out, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then I also applied to a couple other different graduate programs, um, including a psychology program and a business program. And the, the main focus for me, um, I've always been a writer and I wanted a career where that would be my focus. And I also wanted a career where I'd kind of be exploring um, human interactions in one form or another. And so um, those options to me kind of checked all of those boxes. And I'm thrilled that Stetson is the one that worked out. I really enjoyed my law school experience. It was a very new experience for me. I had gone from being um, a very anonymous student at a large university where I was um, commuting, really, and, you know, taking, changing my major and um, kind of taking all the classes and, and wasn't really... Um, called upon to talk about any direction I wanted to head or, um, you know, things that were bigger than the school experience that I was interested in. And so that's really what Stetson was for me. Stetson was a time where um, I stood up and talked in class. It was a time where I learn to identify the ways that I wanted to make an impact in the world. And it was a time for all kinds of new experiences for me. I did law review. I did moot court. Um, I was a teaching assistant and just really got to explore all kinds of um, ways to be a lawyer and to grow professionally. And um, through that experience in moot court, really settled on appellate law as where I wanted to make my career. My job search started um, when I was still in law school, but some of my summer programs that I'd done were things that were interesting to me at the time, but weren't necessarily places where I knew I was going to stay after law school. And, and part of that was geographically, too. Um, I had some wonderful experiences with some great firms and, and organizations and offices, um, but I knew that I would need to do a full job search as I neared the end of law school. And I was really lucky because the um, career development office at Stetson was so incredibly helpful and um, helped me make some of those connections, which can be hard to make at the end of your law school um, experience because you're not going the traditional route of a summer and then, you know, getting hired that way. And, um, but still, you know, not impossible, just takes a little uh, bit of non traditional work, which I'm used to. And so I made a connection with a wonderful firm, and I have pretty much been with that firm in some iteration or another. Um, it's the Fowler White firm, that uh, Tampa based law firm. Um, and I've been with various um, offshoots of that firm since the beginning of my career. You're listening to Journey to Esquire, the podcast, where we explore the best ways to promote diversity, create access, and feed the legal pipeline with talented students of all backgrounds. Here are some guidance from today's guest. So my advice to new and future law students would be the kind of old cliche advice, but maybe with a with a new twist, and I'll talk about that, to be yourself. Um, you'll, especially if you don't have lawyers in your family or weren't exposed to this world growing up, um, I wasn't, you won't necessarily have somebody that you're modeling after, somebody who looks like you, sounds like you, um, thinks like you. That's a really good thing. That's a really good thing that you're bringing to the profession and embrace it and realize that it's an asset and don't be embarrassed about it. You know, don't be ashamed of it. Um, realize that it's a strength. And when you can start treating it like a strength, you'll be an incredibly powerful attorney for it. 
and you'll be able to do a lot for your clients and a lot for yourself um, out there in the world. And so I, I think it's easier said than done, but I think it also helps to seek out those role models um, who are more like you in various ways. And, and that can be in so many different types of ways, similar backgrounds, similar interests. And then of course, you know, in terms of race, religion, and, and all of those things, um, have a variety of them, a variety of people you look up to. You'll find that you take certain things from certain people um, that you think are, are great traits in a lawyer, or great traits in a person, and um, put them put them all together as you see fit and whatever gels with you, and then bring out what's in you uniquely. And uh, I think that's kind of the recipe for a great lawyer and, and just a great life, being happy with yourself and who you are. One of the greatest paths that I've found in my career to career satisfaction is through voluntary bar service and pro bono work. Um, both of those things have been such a strong aspect of my identity as a lawyer since I first started practicing. Um, in terms of pro bono service, it's just such an incredible way to find meaning in your license to practice law, your role as an officer of the court. And, and just it's when you really it's so empowering because you really realize the things that you can do out there in the world to make a difference. And it's maybe a way too if you're not if what you're doing on a day to day basis um, doesn't necessarily make your heart sing day in, day out. And we've all been there. Um, you know, you should try to find something that is stimulating for you that you do enjoy, but you will have those days and having something that you're able to do that really feels meaningful to you is such an incredible asset for your practice, short term and long term. Um, it's, it's really what can keep you going. Um, same with voluntary bar service. I was lucky enough to get involved in the Florida Bar Appellate Practice section. Right when I first started practicing and kind of, um, you know, as I mentioned before, um, got to transition into that full appellate role when I finally beat down those doors and they were kind enough to let me in. And the great thing about voluntary bar service, well, so many great things, but the best thing about it is you kind of get to decide what you want to do, how, how to make it your own. And for me, um, I started out in the appellate practice section chairing the pro bono committee, which I did for a number of years. And it was such a great opportunity for leadership. And you, you can learn through those experiences how to become a better leader, how to be more effective how to engage volunteers and how to motivate others and, and how to encourage others too. And, and all of those things are so important for any change that you want to make in the world. Anything that you want to get done out there, you're going to need to know how to do those things. And so it's such a great launching pad for that, for that kind of role, whatever you want to do in the world, start out with voluntary bar service, take on a project that speaks to you. And so, so that's where I started out. I eventually um, chaired the appellate practice section. I'm currently the immediate past chair. And that too was such an incredible experience um, in, in leadership and, and leading that group, a group that I cared so much about, a group that really has, I give them credit for keeping me in the practice of law because the practice of law is so adversarial, especially if you're in litigation. And even if you aren't, it's still very much um, a perfectionist kind of world. You know, we are, perfection is expected of us. Um, we are expected to dot every I and cross every T. It's what we're paid to do. It's stressful. And you have you know, opposing counsel and judges and that you have to answer to and, and your clients, of course, that you are trying to advocate for and that you want the best for. And so in the midst of all of that, finding a community of lawyers that aren't on the other side, or maybe they are in some cases, but you're meeting them in a forum where they're not on the other side and you're getting to know them in that forum. 
And now our, our appellate bar is relatively small. And I see my opposing counsel all the time. And, you know, we'll maybe get coffee or lunch after an oral argument. Um, and we, you know, give each other all the extensions when we can. Um, and it's just, it makes my actual practice a better experience in addition to giving me a bunch of great people to work with to make great things happen. We've built programs that help people who need help in our community together. We have helped law students together. We have taught educational courses together. And having that experience just kind of makes it better to be a lawyer, makes for a better life being a lawyer. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce you to one of the law students in the Journey to Esquire Scholarship and Leadership Program. My name is Marcia Frith. My role in the program is a scholar. And I became a lawyer to be an advocate for others who may not have a voice. I attend Western Michigan Cooley Law School in Tampa, Florida. Journey to Esquire has allowed me to strengthen my weaknesses that I may have and also to enhance the strengths that I do possess and also to network with a community that I probably would never have the ability or the access to have. We just passed the mic to attorney Sarah Lau Amin. In her time with us, she left us with three key takeaways. Number one, she spoke about appellate litigation. Number two, she encouraged our listeners by just saying, be yourself. Number three, she spoke about voluntary bar service and pro bono work. I'd like to give a special thanks to all of our supporters, especially our JD level sponsors, U.S. District Courts, Middle District of Florida's Bench Bar Fund, and Agape Christian Bar Preparation Services, Inc. for their generous support. I'd also like to thank WMU Cooley Law School, Tampa Bay Campus, for providing a space for the recording of several of the episodes of this podcast. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another great episode of Journey to Esquire, the podcast. Support, share, subscribe. And for more, visit www.journeytoesquire.com.